All right, so excited to have you here. We've got an amazing customer spotlight session today. So as we all know, uh, this year's really pushed uh, IT teams to, to really make a lot of changes in a matter of weeks. And what we wanted to do at Better Hub is get a couple of our customers together um, to really hear your stories and, and really understand what that meant for you, what, what 2020 has ultimately been like as an IT professional. And so we've got Anthony here from uh, LaunchDarkly, and we've got Enrique from DoorDash uh, to talk to us exactly about that. So we'll do a round of introductions. I'll kick things off. My name is Michael Connery. I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering at Better Cloud. I've been here for almost six years now. My team is responsible for making sure that potential customers and customers alike get the most value possible out of our platform and, and really understand what Better Cloud can help do uh, for their environments. And so I've had a great time here meeting people like uh, Enrique and Anthony, but obviously I'd love to hear intros from you two and not just about yourselves, but a, a brief word about what your companies do as well for those who may not be familiar. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Anthony, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. So Anthony Anchetta, um, I work for Launch Darkly. I'm the technical operations lead. Um, I lead all of our technical operations teams and application engineering teams uh, in-house. I started out my career in the U.S. Navy um, as a systems administrator, working on secret and unclassified networks. Um, bounced sort of around all over the place, getting out the military, landed in, uh, at IDEO and did eight years with IDEO and then uh, a couple of different startups, um, Cindio, Lean Plum, uh, most notably Lime, um, and now Launch Darkly. And so that's kind of who I am. Awesome, thank you. Enrique, how about you? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Enrique Jenkins. I'm the director of IT at DoorDash. For those of you who do not know what we do, we are a delivery, not sorry, we are a technology platform and we support merchants, dashers, and consumers um, with a platform that we can build multiple logistics methods of delivering goods, essentially. I got my career started in the federal government. Uh, I don't know how many years ago, that was a long time ago. Uh, I worked in the computer forensics division, uh, got, my, got my feet wet there, uh, kind of bounced around from the government into the private sector. I started working in multiple startups, bounced around and got my way up to the Bay Area. And uh, now I'm here at DoorDash leading a technology team, uh, corporate technology, essentially. Uh, we do networks, uh, network engineering, infrastructure, uh, enterprise systems, cloud engineering services, service tests, uh, the whole gambit. And so uh, I'm happy to be here today. So thank you both for the introductions. Um, so what I'd love to hear now, obviously a lot's changed since March uh, with, with what's going on in the world, how businesses operate. So I'd kind of love to hear from both of you around what's happened to your orgs and teams in March and, and since then, and what challenges have you faced and have you had to overcome? Um, so Anthony, why don't, we, why don't we kick things off with you? Yeah, sure. So, you know, changing from now till March, right? And so a lot has happened. <laughs> uh, we, we've all gone to this remote sort of work. Um, and not only that, like we've started hiring remotely, we've started offboarding remotely, we've started supporting remotely. Um, and everything from office builds to trying to understand like where are our linchpins um, and what are the things that we need to do in order to better support the business? And so I think one of the biggest things that we had to do at the beginning of this was try to understand, you know, where we had gaps, where we had holes, and then fix them during the pandemic, um, and then do the disaster recovery plan also of what does it look like if we never go back to the office for the immediate future? Um, so that means like staffing up teams or teams that may have had one person in them. Contractors during the pandemic um, turned into sort of this, this gray area on how do we even support the contractors. Um, so we did a whole lot of staffing up. Um, I hired four people at the beginning of, well, two months into the pandemic and staffing up my teams and making sure that we had redundancy within our roles. Not only that, but like that we could support remote onboarding and offboarding and support remote tool usage. And so doing the, the analyst that goes along with like, how are we consuming our tools um, and what is our utilization? 
and then making sure that we have enough bandwidth, um, not only bandwidth at home, but bandwidth with network, bandwidth with seats and utilization um, across our SaaS tool sets. That's awesome. Yeah, obviously a lot has to change very quickly. It's all, it's great that you can bring some people on board to help out with that. Um, but cool. Yeah, definitely. Enrique, how about from your end? Same question. Yeah, so back in March was a, a interesting time for myself. I was on fraternity leave. My son had been born uh, the month prior. So I was dealing with being a new dad. My, my parents were in town. My in-laws were in town. So there was a lot going on personally. And then we were hearing the news and the murmurs about the, the, the state being shut down and everything going on with the pandemic. And then it happened. Thankfully, I had a team in place already and they were able to keep me in the loop yeah, by, by text. I'm not supposed to be working. Uh, however, they were able to execute and mobilize efficiently without my direction, and which is anything that a manager can ever ask for is that your team knows how to work autonomously. So uh, I was thankful for my team to step in and, and deliver what we need to do to shift to this work from home environment. Obviously we're still in this work from home environment. So we've iterated and improved processes, but at, at the time when it was, you know, it was time to execute, my team stepped up and delivered. And I was super thankful for that. That's great. I, I love hearing that. Um, it really does like put a lot of people in a position where they need to just kind of get scrappy and do a little bit more. And so that, that's awesome to hear that both of you are surrounded by some great people who really help make that work. Um, so sort of in that same vein, what specifically have your teams done to really accelerate their pace of innovation and really keep up with whatever the new challenges of your businesses have been um, over the past seven months or so? That, I mean, that's a great question. And I, I think there's a lot there to unpack. And I mean, I, th I think one of the, the core things when we talk about like innovation and just iteration on top of current processes or, or current um, structures that are in place, the pandemic made it so that, you know, we have to over communicate everything. Um, and, and I think everything sort of revolves back to that because you don't have that one-to-one -one sort of feel anymore where, you know, you can go walk up to someone's desk and say, hey, you know, there's this issue with this or, you know, we're stalled or blocked on this project due to X, Y, and Z. Um, you have to over communicate. And now over communication takes the form of a Zoom meeting or uh, multiple Slack like DMs or whatever the case may be. Um, the ability to like cross collaborate, whether it's through documentation, whether it's you know over Slack or whether it's just picking up a phone, um, we're doing way more of that right now, right? And, one of the things that I always push my teams to is also just to automate, right? Like automate every single thing that you can. Um, all the remedial taskings that we have to do day in, day out. You know, if you have to do it, you know, more than three times in a week, you should be looking at how to automate that um, so that we aren't spinning our wheels on things that we don't necessarily have to um, and let the systems work for us. That's awesome. I like, I like that. Enrique, how about on your end? Yeah, so thankfully we were already set up for success in the sense that we already are a 100% SaaS environment. So the tooling was in place. Uh, our processes and our people had to essentially shift how they were operating and how they're executing their deliverables. And kind of what Anthony mentioned is communication and over communication with our end users and I won't say resetting, but adjusting expectations of what the end users can expect of us for providing proper service delivery for problems or issues, onboarding, offboarding, access controls, whatever the need may be. And so in this environment that we're in, the communication or communication was, was huge because when you were in the office, we actually had people who could walk up to our dedicated dash bar for whatever support you needed. We had a staff member there ready to support you. Now we've had to fully mobilize to being uh, phone, we've actually introduced phone support, which no one thought we'd ever do. We'd ever bring that back, but we have phone support, uh, Slack support, Zoom support, obviously email support and ticketing. So uh, just whatever we could do to make sure that the end user's experience was the same, if not equal, just a little bit different. So recently expectations from our end users and our partners and make sure we communicate what those changes are 
and how we can continue to iterate on those processes and the gaps that we find. That's great. Yeah, one thing, like, I've always heard the best support is where you're meeting the end user where they prefer to get support. So being able to introduce those different areas back is, is truly great. So kudos to yeah. you for being able to do that brings up like so many questions for me just for Enrique like how did your team feel about going to you know do phone support right like it's been such a long time since we've had you know one-to-one -one phone support like how was that received well, well since this is a safe space I'll tell you they were not happy at all but we're a customer first environment we're a customer first uh, uh, team and so they understood the mission behind that they weren't happy about it because who once they were they were uh, soft phones, uh, of course, but the team had to essentially, hey, like I started my career doing all this stuff. I started my career doing triage and, and inventory and things like that. So no one's, there's nothing that's, you know, above anybody or beneath anybody. So just, you know, take this as an opportunity to learn from it. You apply your, your skill sets to what you've done and we can actually solve what we need to do for the company. So uh, they weren't happy about it, but at the end they realized the value it brought and how it was able to actually improve our, our our customer satisfaction by having that someone to answer a call right away which is quicker than you know our ticket slas and things like that so in the long run it worked out good but initially it was a lot of i had a lot of pushback from my team yeah i, could, I can definitely imagine that um that actually like ties perfectly into sort of what i wanted to touch on next which was obviously enrique you kind of talked about this already so anthony i'd love to hear your thoughts on this but roles have changed to align with like the new goals of the business um, and really employee productivity as like a, not as a concept, but about how it happens has changed as well. So how have both of your roles changed to really sort of align those two things a little bit closer now in, uh, in today's new world, if you will. Uh, Anthony, how about you first? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the, this is a, a big challenge of our jobs, right? And so when you add a layer of the pandemic to it, and I've talked about this in, in previous talks where we have to stay aligned with the business, right? And that can be challenging normally, um, but then you add the pandemic to it and, you know, what were normally like check-ins and leadership meetings, they, they take a completely different form. And we may not be disseminating that information down as quickly or you know as thoroughly as we may want people to, but you have to sort of work with that. And I, I think our role sort of changes where you know you may get a business decision on Monday and then on Wednesday it's like, hey, we had to pivot. Um, and so I, th I think that our roles then become like we turn into Gumby where we're being super flexible and, and we're, you know, all over the place trying to make sure that we're the glue sticking these things together. Right. And so even right now, like we're going through 2021 planning, we're doing Q4 planning. Like we just finished the ISO audit like, during the pandemic and all these things take precedence um, to the business because, you know, we, ha we have to have our certificate. Um, we're entertaining FedRAMP and what that actually looks like. And so all these things are, are, are shifts that, you know, we have to say, okay, well, what's the most important here? And like do the stack ranking and triage all these things to, to constantly stay in line with the business. Um, and then where we may be shifting. So, you know, we had planned before this to expand overseas. Mm, that's not exactly going to happen right now because, you know, you can't just send a bunch of people overseas and there's visas and there's countries that won't let you in. Um, so there's all these things that you, you have to address um, and over communicate and put yourself in those places to where you're getting the most up to date information so that you can pivot um, with your team and just making sure that everyone understands like, hey, we have to be flexible right now. <laughs> That's super helpful to hear. Um, one sort of like follow-up question for you actually is, how do you go about measuring progress really like <laughs> during all of this? Uh, if you're being pulled in so many different directions at once and obviously getting out of that mindset of, you know, traditionally IT sort of in the back room, you're very front and center, both of you in, in what you're doing today. How do you 
measure that progress when you're being pulled in so many different directions. Yeah, I mean, that's really high. I and mean, Enrique touched on this like in, in a, another conversation and, you know, um, we tend to be perfectionists, right? Um, IT is very binary, technical operations is very binary. You wanna be able to deliver, you know, that perfect thing. Um, right now, <laughs> we can't deliver that perfect thing. You can deliver something um and then iterate on top of that and you know one of the things i tell the team all the time is like hey progress right now is measured in millimeters right it it's the it's just moving that ball forward um hey did we move it forward yes we may not have you know made the the leaps and bounds that we may want to make um we may not have crushed our q3 goals but it's okay roll them over into q4 and like we'll keep at it um and we just have to keep iterating on top of that right like versioning is, is our best tool right now. It's like, all right, cool. 1.4, 1.6, 1.7. We'll get to two one day, but right now we, we just have to go with the incremental change. And, you know, it can be the smallest of changes, but we just need to keep making that progress um, despite not being able to deliver these fully fledged sort of uh, initiatives. Perfect. Oh, that's, that's yeah. Great. Enrique, go yeah, ahead. So yeah, so like when we talked about the other day, um, your your progress is measured in millimeters. I say uh, progress over perfection. So different words, same sentiment. And so I tell my team that I have a lot of idioms I share with my team actually quite a bit. Uh, but that's one of them that I say quite a quite a bit. The the thing for me is this pandemic has caused the the shift in how IT is viewed within the company. Essentially. Everyone knows IT is a black box when things are quiet. No one cares about us. They don't care how we do things. They all, all the care is that they're done. Now that we're in the midst of this pandemic, I've actually been kind of thrown into the forefront. People are looking to me for my thought leadership saying, hey, Enrique, how do we get through this? How can we adapt to this? Uh, you're used to working in uncertainty and chaos and being like Gumby and pivoting. So this is essentially where my team has been flourishing, <clears throat> excuse me, because we're expected to deliver service for executives to interns and all in between at the drop of a dime. And so this pandemic has been able to highlight how adaptable that we and IT are. So it's actually been a, a bit of a blessing in disguise to actually give me more staffing, give me more funding, to give me more resources. People, people are seeing how the sausage is made, which we didn't have the opportunity before because they were saying, well, if IT is working and the internet works, uh, my laptop works, then fine, we don't need you. Uh, However, they don't realize how integral we are to every function within the business. And then, like I said earlier, communicating with those business partners, keeping them along on the journey has been super tremendous, super helpful to actually move that needle along and get at those resources that we, we have needed, so that we've needed in the past. So. And I imagine too, because DoorDash is like growing so rapidly right now that probably, and not to put words in your mouth or anything, but my assumption is that each one of those things is just amplified by the fact that you're growing as fast as you are. Is that fair to say? That might be the understatement of the year, but yes, fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool, cool. Well, I have one more question for both of you. So we've talked a lot about the pandemic, um, but for everyone else out there who's a better cloud customer thinking about becoming a better cloud customer, uh, we're just interested generally in sort of the SaaS ops ecosystem as a whole. How has SaaS Ops and really been essential in helping your organizations thrive amidst uh, COVID? And sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can run with this one. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm a better cloud evangelist uh, first, but I think for me, this is my third time implementing better cloud. Um, I usually come into companies when they are not a fully fledged shop, right? There may be one, two, three ITs and automation is really key to what we do as technologists um, and being that connective tissue within, you know, our core application stack. And so I always look to for better cloud for a couple of different things. Um, one, to automate reporting and automate like, things like, hey, uh, we have a document that's shared with outside people and you know this needs to get shut off. Um, or just connecting tools, groups, workflows, automation inside of our core app, right? Um, 
And so the Google, we all know how the Google admin console can be lacking. Um, and so that's always been my bread and butter to be able to manipulate uh, Google and Google users, groups, and all of these other things by using Better Cloud, especially when you pair it with Okta. And so for me, like, we're 100% SaaS cloud-based also, right? We don't have any servers. Everything's in what well, we do there in AWS, but we don't have anything on-prem. Um, so for us, like Better Cloud is, is the bread and butter in order to manipulate our core stack um, and integrate everything into it. Enrique, how about for you? Same question. Yeah, so for me, uh, and simply put, Better Cloud demystifies a lot of what we do within IT. Um, I've been a big fan of the product back even in the flash panel days. Uh, I've read Dave's books. So uh, his words and this tool has helped me to articul articulate some of the things that we're doing in IT to the powers above. Uh, at the stage of my career now where I'm less of a, a tactical hands-on engineer, where I'm actually providing strategies, providing roadmaps, and providing plans for things, this tool makes it very simple to explain how things operate within IT. And so kind of what I said earlier about having funding, having those, those business partners, it, I can't help but stress enough how it makes IT uh, demystified. Again, people don't know what we do, but this tool helps to articulate what we're doing um, with the user account creation, with the rules, the automation things, the things that Anthony said, if you do it three times in a week, you need to automate it. This tool does it. And so I can't speak highly enough about the tool. Uh, it's growth path. I've seen the tool mature over the years. So I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of what they stand for. And so uh, I'll always be a better cloud customer if I can afford it. Uh, <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> but uh, I'm always, I'm always a, big, a big fan of the, of the product and the tool. So it's, it, it made my life easier, honestly, just as, as uh, in my role. So. Well, I love that. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you both so much for this. It was extremely insightful for me. I'm hoping for everyone else watching as well. But uh, it's been great having you both here. So thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, have a good rest of your day.